financial educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present Trade Momentum and Gaps is Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thanks for having me, everyone. Great to be here today, 12 o'clock noon today on Fed Day. So very exciting day to be talking about trading the U.S. stock market. I expect today will be wild at 2 o'clock. Um, so it's a great day to talk about training, to talk about making money, and specifically what I do, which is gaps. So today we're going to talk about trading momentum and gaps. And if you have any questions, you can just plop them in the room or in the little chat box, <laughs> and I will see them. For those who don't know or haven't seen me before, I do appear on TV. I talk about the stock market. I also talk about the economy. And my take on what the Fed is going to do today is that they're not going to change rates or imply that they're not going to change rates this year as much as people think. And so it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts today. And again, it's an exciting time to trade now, not because of the Fed day, but also because of the fact it's earnings season, which we're going to talk about a little bit too. <clears throat> if you have questions, you can always email me after today at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So it's hard to believe, but tomorrow is actually August 1st. So I mean, more than half the year is over. Um, and before you know it, it's gonna be Halloween. I mean, I just feel like this year has flown by, at least for me personally. And again, the interesting thing about trading and specifically day trading, because that's what I do, I day trade. I'm a day trader. Some people like to day trade, some people like to do swing trades, long-term investing. But what I love about day trading is that you can chunk it out. And I say that because you're pulling money actively out of the market every single day when you day trade. I also do options, which we're gonna talk about too. And again, if you have questions, you can plop them in the room. Uh, this is our stats through last Thursday. I have to update the last couple of days. This morning we shorted Microsoft, just so you know. I'll show you the chart in here. Microsoft had earnings last night. We made money in Microsoft today. But this is our stats and our results so far year to date through the 25th of July, 562,607, my average risk in my day trades. These are day trades on margin. I call all the trades live in the room, the entry, the exit, and the stop is an average of about $3,000 per trade. And we're gonna talk about some of those. Now, I also do options. Um, I have to update this too, but I risk more of my options. So my stats for my options newsletter, which is a newsletter subscription, if you're interested in that, you can email me, is 1690865. So we're really up for the year so far this year, over $2 million. Again, I've been extremely focused. We've had a lot of opportunity in the market. We've had a lot of volatility. The market has been very bullish, or at least was, up until about two weeks ago. In fact, the market power trended most of 2024, which is unexpected. And it really was built in, actually, that the, that, the, that the Fed was going to lower rates this year. First, they said five times, then four times, then three times. Now people are saying two times. I, I mean, at this point now, based on the data, I wouldn't be surprised if the Fed does not change rates at all this year. Because they're going to say, what we did is fine, what we did is working. And we had a number this morning, too. But overall, it seems the economy is very strong. And I think the Fed is scared or concerned about, uh, you know, lowering rates too fast. But what's probably going to end up happening is it's going to backfire. And then we may end up pushing into a slight recession into 2025 because they take too long to lower rates. Even if the Fed lowers rates twice this year, a half a percent or even one percent, rates are still very, very high. And if you're in a period um, where you have a lot of kids or you're back to back with your paychecks, you understand how much prices have gone up and have affected everyday lives. And the benefit of trading, specifically day trading is, and even short term options that I do, I do the weeklies, is that you can pull money out of the market on a regular basis. Common sense tells you that obviously you have to know how to do it. So again, if you know how to trade, you can make money. If you don't know how to trade, you can't make money. So I mean, that again should be trading 101, but I think many, many people trade. They have all these ideas that they're gonna make all this money and really not know what to do. It doesn't work like that. Every once in a blue moon, you could get in what they call a lucky trade and you could make all this money. 
and not knowing what to do. That's really not realistic and that's not gonna happen on a consistent basis. And it's really about the consistency that you need to, you need to have that consistency in order to make money. Um, I just looking at the chat here, somebody saying something about an algo. I don't know if that was something from somebody else's uh, question uh, presentation or not. But if it was something else for me, then can you rewrite the question? Whoever asked about, about that, I can only see the end of the question. Anyways, like I think I was that was saying, our previous presenter. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'll go. Um, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you want to chunk it out. So we shorted Microsoft today. We got in, got out. Boom, done. That's it. We were in and out in a couple of minutes. That's what day trading is. Okay. And again, you have to have a margin account to day trade. So you can trade at a retail place with four to one margin. You're going to get at a retail broker or if you want to go prop, you can get 10 to one, 10 to one margin at a prop broker. But again, you have to have a margin account to do day trades. So like I was saying earlier, how do you make money in the market? Well, you have to be able to predict the direction the stock's going to go or the market if you're playing the market. And therefore, guess what? You need to use your brain. So, so many people are interested in buying systems or buying all kinds of things where they're just going to plop all these indicators on the chart and then magically they're going to make millions and millions of dollars. That's totally unrealistic and, and that's just not the way that it works. You actually do need to use your brain and actually you should want to use your brain. Your brain is your best asset. I think so many people who just want to be lazy about trading don't want to use their brain. The fact is, my brain is my best asset, and that is what enabled me to come up with the system that I use today, and it has enabled me to make the money that I make now in the market, like I just showed you for our results for this year. So I have a very good brain. I have a healthy brain. I take care of it, and you should too. Trying to pretend that you can just press a button and not think is, is exactly what's going to create you to lose, and then you're going to get sucked into doing things that you really shouldn't be doing. Again, really trading when it comes down to it is a lot of it is based on common sense. Um, and again, we're going to talk about that more when we talk about specifically the strategy that I use to trade. But it is about control, determining who is in control. So if you say, okay, well, the bulls are in control, therefore you want to do what? Go long. If you say the bears are in control, then what would you want to do? You would want to short, okay? Now, again, most of my trades actually are shorts. And we've had a good year despite the fact the market's been running up because we do a multitude of many different stocks. Sometimes I do the market. We had a huge period in the last two weeks because the market was selling off and we did do market trades as well. So again, what happens today after two o'clock, I don't know with this market, but I think it's very, very important what the market's reaction is today after two o'clock with the Fed meeting. Now, getting back to what I was saying, how do you determine who is in control? I developed a system and a method that I use, okay? And it, I use a worksheet, I figure it out, I look at the daily chart, and I use technical analysis. It's based on a 26-point checklist that tells me what to trade and who's in control. So again, if I rate the gap, and we're going to talk about what a gap is in a minute. Then I determine where the control side is. I'm looking for institutional money to see who's buying and who's selling. So if the gap rates 20 points or more, I will take it in the direction of the gap. Again, I'm doing all of this in the morning, all of this in pre-market. Microsoft had earnings last night, and I could have actually rated Microsoft gaps, Microsoft's gap last night. Now, last night, Microsoft was at 390 Okay, in the gap. This morning it was not, it was still down. And again, we played it out, we shorted it, but actually things change in the morning. So I usually wait to the morning to trade. Uh, somebody's saying something about banks are in control. Banks are one of what I would say is uh, the positioned players in the market. So that is partially true, that is partially true. So banks also invest and take positions in stocks. And again, big hedge funds, professional traders, and large institutional banks, which is part of the institutional money. And again, you know, you have a network of banks. We saw what happened early 2023 when that one bank went under, when Silicon Valley Bank went under, and then of course they were bailed out even over the 250,000 and how that affected the market and how that affected the regional banking sector. And who knows what will happen, you know, if rates really don't go down, because I think some of these regional banks are hanging on by a thread. Now, of course, maybe some more get bought, by some of the larger banks. Again, banks do control a lot of what's going on. The banks have been doing well, actually. 
um, if you look at some of the bank charts. But let's talk about what I was saying here. What is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today, is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? But how do you predict the direction of that gap? Now, like I was saying, we did, this is Microsoft, okay? So this is a daily chart. Oh, I can't believe it's July 31st. It's crazy. So this was last night. So last night, Microsoft closed here, 4 o'clock Eastern time, boom, open in the morning here, rallied a little bit, then dropped. So we shorted Microsoft today. Here's the drop. I don't know where this is at right now because I'm with you. But anyways, we had a short in here, and we did a day trade, and we got in, got out, boom, done. And again, this is a gap. So it's a difference in the close and the open. So this was a bearish gap. Just to give an example here, the over here was a bullish gap. This was middle of July. Microsoft closed at one price and opened at a higher price. So this was a bullish gap or a gap up. Boom. I had another one here. Boom. So again, Microsoft, one of the big things of the market does affect the overall market. We have a massive, huge earnings out tonight, which again is weird timing with the Fed meeting. Meta, which will always be Facebook to me, reports tonight after the bell. Meta will gap. Okay, what it will do, will it gap up, will it gap down? Will it even be a good gap that will qualify per my 26 point checklist to even trade at all? I don't know. I don't know, I'm not in it, okay? You don't take something into the earnings, but once I see it, then I will make a determination if I'm going to trade it tomorrow, tomorrow's Thursday. So here was another one we did. This was one of the biggest trades that we've had in the last month, this was Schwab. So this was 716. Again, this is a daily. Stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here, snug as above, right around 75 and change, boom. Gap down here in the morning, around 70 something, open, dropped, fell. Closed here, gap down again, fell off a cliff. We, we did day trades in this, we did options in this. This was a monster, monster, monster short for us. Oops, sorry. Uh, we did the 69 puts. Okay, I just wanna show you here. So if you wanna trade options with me in the newsletter, I send the trades out usually in the pre-market in the morning. So I sent this out at 9.08 in the morning. Market doesn't open until 9.30. Can't do options until the open. But we did the 69 puts. I'm just go back. You see what happened to this? Do. This was a huge trade, okay? And again, no matter where you got out of it, but it was a really, really, really nice trade. This was a 775% return on investment trade. The cost was cheap. There were 80 cents. Sold at seven. This wasn't even the best exit that you could have gotten. It kept going even after I got out of it. But I, I thought it was a really, really, really good trade. And it was up a lot of money. So it was, I risked 8,800 on this. The profit was 68,200. And again, it was cheap. It went big. We were in it early. What if you risked $1,200? These are the types of trades. And I call these trades all the time. I had some of these trades that I called in the newsletter last week with the sell-off we had. We were, we were in very early. We were in before the sell-off, actually. We were short. And this, this type of profit, $9,300 on a $1,200 risk, can really make people's accounts, turn a small account into a big account. And that is how people should be growing their accounts. What would have been the worst thing that happened here if this trade would have lost uh, you would have lost the risk. That's it. That's the nice thing about options. So in options, you are buying it. And like the way that I do it, I buy the call and sell the, uh, buy the call, sell it, buy the put, sell it. That's how I'm playing the options. I'm playing them based on momentum. And again, the momentum for Schwab, the control was where? To the downside. So we had selling. Okay, so the bears were in control of Schwab. This was, again, two weeks ago. Fell a little bit yesterday, really not doing anything with this right now. That was a really nice trade. What, what is the reason I prefer to short, which I was talking about earlier, is because, again, Schwab is a great example, market's a great example in the last two weeks, because fear and panic comes in when a stock sells off. And most retail traders prefer to go long. There's a mindset that's involved with trading and again, many traders can wrap their head around buying low and selling high, but shorting for some reason is something that most traders don't know how to do or don't know how to do it very well. It's something I've made a living doing since I've been trading, since I started trading. And again, I've been trading for 16 years. So I, I, this is my niche, shorting. 
and you can do it in any type of market. It's finding the specific stocks. It's finding individual stocks to do things that are going to fall and sell off and where you have the fear and panic because basically you're shorting that, okay? I mean, if you think about it, if you were in something and you were down, what would you do? You would sell or you should sell, but in some cases, even the broker will sell you out of the position if you're upside down. Uh, we did a day trade in this too. Same day here, this was on the 16th, the first day here we had it. And again, you would have needed a margin account to do this. We shorted at 70.10. I got out in the morning quick, 68.88. Again, this kept going way, way more. $4,270 was a profit on this with a $3,500 risk. I just wanna go back here and show you where this went on the day. This went much, much further. This is even on the day that I did the day trade and we first got into the puts came all the way down here. But again, I like to get in and out quick in the morning and that's what we did. So this was a one minute, I day trained on the one minute chart. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, boom. We got in, got the drop. Here's the whole day though. Just wanna show you here where you could have actually held it all the way down the entire day if you wanted to and you could have had a better, a better exit. I get this question all the time. No, I'd always have the perfect exits. I have pretty good exits. Um, Microsoft kept going today after I got out of it. But again, my goal is to make money. My goal is to be consistent. And sometimes we just end up having trades like the Schwab puts or whatever because we're already in it and it continues in our direction. And we, we saw that last week actually with the market. So, uh, you know, how do I figure this out ahead of time? I have to see the gap first. So I told you Meta's gonna gap tonight. I don't know what it's gonna do, but I will rate it to determine the direction that it's gonna go after I see it. I can do it tonight, I could do it tomorrow. I get up early, I prefer to get ready in the morning, but that's what I did with Microsoft today too, okay? The purpose of the checklist is to give you confidence and conviction to trade. There's no getting around the risk that you must take. In order to make money in the market, you must take risk, okay? So again, the purpose of trading is to make money. I think people are at this for so long, so many years, trying to figure it out, trying to do it. They get in a, a habit formation in their mind of what they're doing, like we were talking about your brain, and they're just in a habit where they are not consistent. They're habitually losing. They're habitually inconsistent as well. And they're doing strategies or non-strategies, I should say, that really don't work. But they're so used to pressing the buttons that they, that they think they're getting somewhere, they're doing something because of the length of time that they've been doing it. It doesn't have to take you forever to learn how to trade and make money. You do have to know what to do. And you do have to use your brain. And again, all of these things, I think people have to come to some kind of conclusion when they realize that they really want to do this for the purpose of success. Success means you're getting somewhere where you have more money in your trading account in a week from now, a month from now, by the end of 2024, than you did when you started out the year, not less, you know. Any questions here so far? How are we doing? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, the rating system helps me to determine the control, okay? Because that's really, really important. And again, it, it's a simplification, but it's really, really true where if something's gonna drop, then you short it. If something's gonna rally, you're gonna make money if you go long, you know? And that is what we try to do. So it's all about having a system and a method, and you need a method. You need a well-defined method in order to trade. And again, no computer, no algorithm is going to create that method for you. Without a well-defined method to replicate daily, how will you have consistent results? And this is where people, I think, like I said, everybody makes money sometimes based on dumb luck. That's not going to get you the success that you want to be able to rely on it, whether it's for money on a regular basis, part-time income, full-time income, or retirement income to substitute your regular job. You need to have the results. And that means you have to be profitable. Even people that don't know what they're doing now can make money in a trade with dumb luck, like I was saying, but that's, that doesn't mean it works all the time. And you need a method you can replicate that works consistently. So I'm looking for a specific set of requirements daily in 26 points. The points are on the daily chart. If I get a 20 point rating or more, then it qualifies for me to do it in the trade. If I don't get it, then I don't do it. So if you think about it, again, you have to get consistent results to be successful. That's a big thing that many traders lack and they're all over the place. A lot of things that traders are, they're all over the place with different types of things. They'll wanna do Bitcoin, futures, 
options, day trades, they're, they're all over the place trying to find the next get rich quick thing and then they never really get good at anything and that isn't gonna help you either. All you need is one thing in the market to get good and all you need is really one good stock pick or one good trade a day to make money, that's it. So like I trade in the morning and then I close out the room. I don't trade all day. If I'm in options, I may watch them like today because of two o'clock, but I mean, I'm not sitting chained at a desk for six and a half hours. I'd go bonkers if I had to do that. And again, you tend to lose money the more that you trade. Less is more. It's like if you're hitting a bullseye, you know, your odds go down if you hit it five times in a row. That's not going to keep happening, happening, happening. Okay. Any questions here so far? How are we doing? Okay. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, when I'm thinking, okay, I use my brain. My background is, was philosophy major and I'm a critical thinker, okay? So that was my background. That's how I thought when I was learned and taught and went to school and I was a political science minor and, and I actually minored in Latin too. So I really was very analytical and I'm still like that. It's my personality. And so when I think about things, I'm like, well, if this thing happens, then that thing is going to happen. Okay. So it's like, it's called a conditional hypothetical proposition in, in, in philosophy or critical thinking. When, when I look at a chart, I'm saying, well, if this happens, then this is going to happen. And that is how I set it up. And so I see the gap. I, again, I don't know what the people that are in charge of Meta are going to say tonight in the earnings call or how the people that are positioned in Meta are going to react to what they said. But I will see whatever it is in the reaction in the chart itself, in the technical analysis in the chart, I will see the stock selling off or I will see the stock getting bought. Then I will look at the chart. Then I will look at the daily chart and I will rate it and I will say if this happens and this is going to happen when? Tomorrow. And then I will take the trade tomorrow. And then that's how I do it. So again, you can't predict everything 100%. There's no 100% in anything. As you can see for the results that I showed you earlier, there are some trades that I lose in, but I have more winners and losers. And I also have some really big winners. And that helps to overcome uh, some of the trades that may be losers because everybody's going to have that. And again, sometimes things happen that people don't expect. You know, I don't think anybody expected the sell off that we had in the last two weeks. And I don't know what they're going to say today, but the Fed could say something today that ha that could be unexpected too. And that's why I say today could be a very wild day for the market. We could continue rallying. We could go up, make new highs or look like we're going to or flirt with it. Or we could fall off a planet, completely reverse the rally we had this morning. Like whatever happens, I won't be shocked at this point with the overall market because even though it's an election year, which is typically stable markets until the election, we're not in a normal election year. We're in a crazy election year, one like we've never seen before. And so I think that with the backdrop of interest rates and the Fed is going to obviously affect markets. Um, someone's asking about something. I didn't even look at the video today because I'm not in it. Uh, so I didn't do anything with the video today. Um, because I, I didn't get in it today because I didn't want to do anything into the Fed meeting at 2 o'clock. So I didn't even look at NVIDIA today. We have time when we're done. I can pull up the chart, tell you what I think of it. Um, NVIDIA does not have earnings yet. But again, I didn't do anything in NVIDIA. I'm not in NVIDIA today because of the fact that, again, we have a meeting at 2 o'clock today. And it's... You, like the only reason we even did Microsoft today, to be honest with you, was because I thought Microsoft would have a move this morning prior to two o'clock, which it did. You know, to take a new position going into the Fed meeting is like a big no-no because you just don't know how it's going to react. So if I have time, I'll pull up the chart in the video. Uh, what else was I going to say? Okay. All right. So anyways, like I was saying, you weigh the pros and cons every time you take a trade. Is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Again, we all set our risk. You should use stops. I use stops. My stop is my risk and my option. I don't kill it. But you got to put the odds in your favor because you're balancing the pros and cons. It's like if you were trying to make a decision, <clears throat> say you wanted to make a huge purchase, a big purchase. You wanted to buy a house. You want, you're going to move. Okay. Different neighborhood, maybe even a different state or city. You're weighing the pros and cons. Okay, the pros are this. The cons are it's, you know, it's going to cost money to move. The pros are it's a, you know, big, beautiful house in a new neighborhood. It's whatever. 
you make a list. I'm really big on lists too, okay? Again, writing things down helps you make it real. We'll talk about this at the end. I'm doing a live class in New York City, which I've never done before. Um, it's face-to-face, -face, and I'm doing it in September. We'll talk about that at the end. But I, I truly believe most of my mo normal monthly class is online. But I truly believe that when people see me, meet me face-to-face, -face, it makes it more real for them. And I think that that's really important. And again, a lot of times people are trading for so long, it never becomes real for them, and it almost becomes like a computer game. Because this isn't a computer game. This is something that is absolutely real. And again, I'm doing it. I'm teaching people to do it. They're making money doing it. You need to understand that this is real. And if you can get out of that kind of computerized thing where you're sitting behind the screen and, and, and it, you know, you kind of lose control, it's better to write stuff down, get a notebook. And again, I'm going to be doing a live class for the first time in September this fall. And, and I'm excited about it because I think a lot of people don't make trading real enough for themselves. It, it just is like this starts out as this fantasy. They're going to make all this money when they first start. Then they don't realize it's more complicated than that. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It's very possible. But I think people get distracted and then they are all over the place and then they lose the vision, which they had from the jump, which was that they wanted to do this for a living. They wanted to do this to be successful. They didn't want to go back to work if they uh, are retired or all of all of the things. Um, someone's asking a question. But I suggest just doing any of your courses in any order. Oh, Dan, that's you. Dan, you should come to New York and do the live class and meet me. You really should. You've been following me forever. Um, but as far as an order, the main class is the Golden Gap course because that's where you're going to learn the 26 points. Um, someone about the broker type, size of account. If you're opening an options account, all you only need is $2,000. Uh, you, you have to be able to do a couple trades. So I would pace yourself. I'd risk 100, 200, no more than 250 with a $2,000 starter options account. If you're doing a prop account, you can open up a prop account probably with somebody for five grand and get 10 to one margin or 50,000 in BP. And then I would still not risk any more than $500 um, in your trade position. So as far as minimal starting, those are the minimal starters for you to do it. Um, okay, as I was saying, trading isn't gambling. It's just not. You got to put the odds in your favor. If you, once you, I'm telling you, when you start to make money with me, it's all going to, all the things that you ever believed and you ever dreamed when you started this will come to fruition. Because I know people are following me for a long time. I know people are at this for a long time. And I come, I come into contact with a lot of different people. And I see how it wears on people with the losses and the years that they put into this and they haven't gotten anywhere. It's because they're not doing things that work. And when someone says blah, 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 that you can pay $500 for a cat class, make 100 grand in a month, common sense tells you that's totally unrealistic. But yet people want to believe these crazy things because of the fact that they've been losing for so long. The fact is that good information costs money, real money. As far as also learning it, you will benefit from learning from someone that's a real person that teaches the class themselves that created the system, which is me. Now, if you know if you want to come to New York, like I said, I'm doing the class in September, but I teach the class live online. It's not reading a book. It's not a recording. It's, it's you're talking to me. You can call me on the phone and ask me a question. I don't understand this. Why did you do the Schwab? And I'll answer it for you and I'll tell you. And again, I'm there in the room every day where people are asking me questions too. And the support system of the room where I'm calling the trades live, like Microsoft, like I say, I really like this or I really like that or hold this one, that helps people. It's the, it's the support system, which is a lot what a lot of people lack. It's not like I'm a personal mentor to every single person that has ta ever taken my class, but I'm certainly here if people need it. And the live daily trading room is sort of like a personal mentorship because you could ask me a question right there live in the room with other people there and I'll answer it and the charts are up. You know, it's it's the best thing that you can get or the closest thing to a personal mentorship when somebody's there and you can ask them a question. I only ever took one class. It was a long time ago, you know, 16 years ago, whatever. And 2008, almost 17 years. And that there was a lot of people in that class. <laughs> I mean, there was like, ridiculous amount of people and not everybody's questions got answered so you know i mean again some people don't teach live classes anymore 
and sometimes there's too many people you can't even ask a question or you get somebody else that answers their phone. I, my voicemail may pick up, but I will hear the message and I will call you back if I'm busy, you know, and I don't pick it up. So it's like, I'm a real person. It's the same thing with even being on TV. People are surprised when they've seen me on Fox and then I pick up the phone. Yeah, I really am here. I live in New York. I'm near Fox Studios. This is, I, this is me. Like, this is real. And if you've been training for a long time, there's like a screw loose where if you're messing up a lot and you're losing money, where you have to just tighten that screw back in because this is real. It's not supposed to be gambling. It's just the lure that comes into it. But that also plays into the factor of while there are some times where I take a trade and I end up making a lot of money because a lot of people are gambling and they're against me in the positions that they're doing the wrong things. I can guarantee you that there were people that were buying the market in the last week and we were short and we were in puts. And I made money in puts in the market in the last week. And I guarantee you people were going long. So, you know, again, there's always somebody on the opposite side of your trade. When you are trading and you are making money, you are taking money from somebody that could be your next door neighbor. It's the survival of the fittest, whoever's the smartest, and sometimes the richest. Because if you have a lot of money, yes, you can manipulate the position. But the stocks that we trade have millions and millions and millions of shares in them. So again, we get easily filled in and out, and I get stopped out. If it stops, it'll fill me in the stop, and I'll get stopped out with a loss. It's not like not going to take me out. But again, if you're someone that really, 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 really wants to do well, you have to be on the side with that big money, with that institutional money that's in control of what's going on. And for whatever reason, whatever the reason is, you can say this thing, you can say that thing, you can say going into a Fed meeting, the market has sold off more in the last two weeks since we hit the high, which was, I have to look at it, whatever the date was, July something something, uh, two weeks ago, We've sold off more in the last two weeks than we have the entire year of 2024. And I know we're rallying today, but again, there's nothing to do until after two o'clock today, in my opinion. You gotta wait. Anyways, I use one strategy daily to stay consistent, the 26-point Golden Gap rating system. Dan was asking earlier what class to do and what order. All of the classes that I teach are good classes for the support of the rating system. So if you take a shorter class or a smaller class, a half-day class before you do the Golden Gap class, that's fine. But you're missing the rating system if you don't do the big class first. So I always suggest people do this to learn how to make the stock pick. So this is the only class, the Golden Gap, that's going to teach you how to make the pick. Anything else that you do will help you and you will learn things. Like I had the trends class yesterday. The trends class teaches long-term trends. That's very helpful for trades if you want to hold them. It's helpful for options trades. It's helpful for swing trades. It's even helpful for day trades. But the fact is that making the picks is the most critical part of it. And that's you're only going to learn that in the Golden Gap class, which is, again, the online class, which is two days or the, the bigger class, which is the one if you want to come to New York. I'm sorry, my phone is, that's a stock switch headquarters. My phone is ringing right now. Someone's calling me as I'm talking to you. Um, anyways, like I was saying, one thing is all you need. There's just, you know, too many traders are all over the place. But getting back to what we're saying, there's one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and move with the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. So every day I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves on the day. Early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. And I was mentioning this earlier, people really, they need a support system. Whether that's somebody to email if they have a question, somebody to pick up a phone, somebody to go get take their trade ideas every day, someone live in a class, people like really need this. And again, it, it's good for people to have that. And it's good for people to learn it themselves, but then to ask the questions from the person that they learned it from. Uh, getting back to what I was saying, it's a checklist. Now let's talk about a couple things here. I feel like I'm far behind because I've been talking. This was a day trade we did in Tesla. Um, this was here. This was last week. Stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. Okay, so Tesla, we did puts in, but this was a day trade. We did a day trade too. You would have had to have a margin account to do this. This was a huge, 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 huge trade. Again, I don't know if you would have had the margin to do this, but if you didn't, you would have done a put. We called puts, I did puts in this too. But I also did the day trade. Here is the profit was 12,500, this kept going. So we did this, I just wanna show you, we did. We got this whole morning move. 
we got this whole thing almost i didn't i didn't get out down here but i got a big chunk of it a big chunk of this in here in the morning and again i i'd like to get out the, as quick as i can 10 o'clock 10 15. this did keep going though and that was here where this went and then we did puts so if you can't afford to do day trades you could just buy a put where, where I called in the room. That's one idea. Someone's mentioning NVIDIA again. Oh, here's a NVIDIA. Someone's asking about NVIDIA. I don't think NVIDIA is ripping up. I don't know where this is right now, but someone's asking about it. I, I forgot I put the chart in here for today. This is up with the market. That's it. <laughs> Whoever asked me about NVIDIA, I'm not crazy about this here. I wouldn't go along this here, and it's up because of the market. The 17th, we did a NVIDIA short 120.80, got out at 117.20. We did this here. Boo, there it goes. That was a day trade. That was a good trade. Uh, someone's asking about risk to reward. We are buying a call and selling it. We are buying a put and selling it. So some people term that what is called a naked uh, put or whatever, where if the trade loses, it loses. And again, you can go back and look at the stats. So I'll take a trade. If I take a trade on a Monday and the trade doesn't work, it never goes my direction, never goes positive. Then I'll bust out losing the whole thing on Friday. I'll hold it into the last day. You could kill it if you want. If it's down a certain percentage, I don't do that. But you could. But I tell you, you'll miss trades that go on to work if you do that. Um, but anyways, I'm looking for 50% to 100% typically in my profit and my options. But many trades are more than that just because I'm already in the trade and it happens to go big on the day, which was the Schwab or even Tesla or in my direction overnight. Again, success requires a plan. Here's a good example. This is actually a really, really, really good example who just brought up about the about the puts. Um, we did the 490 cues. And, and I'm going to have to rush through this here because I'm watching my time. I called them on Thursday, two weeks ago, whenever that was. This was a huge trade. Took a week. Could have held it the last day, which I don't typically do. And still, and you actually could have made more. It cost $3.30, sold at $13. It took a week to go. It was down. This was almost 300%. If you'd risk $13.20, $38.80, let me just show you the day, seven eleven. See that? This trade here, the day that I called it, was down, down, down for days until it went. And yes, yeah, you could have made more money holding it the last day, which I didn't do. So it was the 490s and the very, 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 very last day of expiration. It touched down at 475, $15 through the strike and the cost was three something. So that was positive even that day, which was insane, completely insane. Like I said, we had a really good week in the last week. Here's the market. We were ready in trades. And some of them were down until it went. Actually, this was two weeks ago, sorry. Actually, that was three weeks ago when I called the one on the 11th. Then we did Mew. I'm going to go really quickly here. Mew was absolutely huge. I should have done a couple of Mews. Uh, Mew was insane. Uh, what day was this? 716. This was ridiculous. We did the 128s. We did Microsoft, that was really good. This was a huge trade. This was again, this is not, this was before yesterday, uh, today. This was back weeks and weeks ago now. Called it here, 445. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make and I'll get towards the end here is you gotta make money if you're doing it. You gotta work smarter, not harder. Again, you spend a lot of time doing whatever you're doing for your career, for your job. You gotta love what you do. And if you're taking time to train and you're like, well, I'm retired, I have the time. If you're, if you're losing, how could you possibly be enjoying that? You know, even if you're doing an hour a day, if you're losing, well, that's not fun. Making money is fun. And actually making money and only working an hour a day, that's a lot of fun. You know, and, and again, you know, I live in New York, so I have more time now to go out and do things like walk in Central Park. There was a picture of the park. You know, it's, it's a different type of lifestyle once you start to do it. But you've got to get the basics down pat, which is the rating system. And I think a lot of people miss that they're, they have to, people are looking at cost and they're weighing the cost of doing something and the types of accounts they can set up with a broker. 
you need, and the fees that they may have to pay for the broker, you know, for a platform, whatever, you need to get value out of your education. What does it matter if you're paying $2,500 for something and you don't get any value out of it? You don't learn how to make money. It, you wasted $2,500. Or some services that are so cheap where people almost are giving them away and then they're calling bad trades and, they're just, and you're losing money. There, there's, that's like negative value. Like there's no value in that, zero. So again, the purpose of doing this is to learn so that you can do it yourself and you don't need me, but I give the support system if you need it until you're ready to go off and do it on your own. Again, you wanna do this, you wanna be successful and it's about empowering yourself to do that, which is exactly what I did for myself and now I'm teaching people to do that for themselves. So it's a complete system to use to train. It's called the Golden Gap. It teaches a 26 point rating system, the entries, the exits, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. I am not doing an online class till October because I'm doing a live class in New York in September. So there's no online class in September and no online class in August. I, you know, I want my weekends off for the summer. The class tuition is $69.99. You can sign up for the October online class now if you want to start trading with us now and getting the earnings season straight. You can do that. I'm doing an earnings season special, but this ends... Friday, so you'd have two days if you want to sign up for this. You'd be signing up for the October class. You get the newsletter free for one year and the trading room free for one year. This ends though on Friday. And then again, no classes in August on marketing for the live class. The live class is $12,999. It's all day Friday, the September 20th, all day Saturday, September 21st, and then a half day, September 22nd for people so then they can, if they you know have to fly out or go back to work on Monday, and again, you come here, get the location, you would have to make your own travel arrangements or if you're on the, in the Northeast, um, you can take a train, take a bus or whatever. If you know somebody or if you live in New York, you can, you can sign up and come. There's a limited number of space for the uh, seats for the space that I rented. And again, once they're full, they're full. But this is not something that I've ever done before. I'm not planning on doing this on a regular basis. So I would take advantage of it if it's something that you wanna do and it's in a fabulous, fabulous place and it's gonna be a great experience for people. And the live class, I, look at that, it's a bird, a picture of a bird I took in New York. The live class includes the trading room, the newsletter, and the market report free through the end of 2025. So you can sign up for this now and start trading with this now. Do the class in New York in September. You would get the rest of 2024 and all of 2025, all my trades, the room trades, the newsletter, and you'd have access right away. So then you come and learn and do the class in September. If you're interested in this or if you have questions, email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Any questions from anyone about anything? How are we doing? I can't believe I don't see any questions. That was really great. Thank you, Anthony. I'm, yeah, it really was. It always job, is, Anthony. but yeah. You're doing a great job. <laughs> I think the last Thank time you. I was here was your first time. 